Hello, everyone, and welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. If you missed yesterday's video, I had uh, my appendix out yesterday. I'm back. I'm back home. We got a new number one deck. We can't miss that. We've also got so much more. The return of Darkhawk, the return of Bounce, two classics. Let's go. And we're not going to make you wait for that new number one deck. It is FAK Crazy. Last season's number one player with Thanos is number one again with a different Thanos. Everyone told you Thanos was dead. I said it was too soon. You're only losing four or five percentage points on your early draw. FAK Crazy proving me correct because Thanos is still at the top of the meta, at least until this patch that is now delayed drops. We'll talk more about the delay and all that stuff in the questions of the day section. This is running like your standard modern Thanos list, where it wants to ramp to get out too many big things for your opponents to possibly shunk. And since it's running extra romp, ramp, extra romp, extra ramp in uh, both Hope and Corvus, it also runs Hella because, well, you're guaranteed to have a 610 in hand for that Corvus, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So if you hit that 610, you've got that to bring back with Hella, which is 16 power for 6 at the very least. And if you don't hit that 610, well, on turn 5, if you played Corvus, you've got a 610 to play, which seems like it's pretty damn good. Very cool deck. All right, so you can find uh, Crazy, FAK Crazy, made a Twitter. It's crazymsnap at twitter.com. Um, you can have Jeff be Psylocke. You don't lose too much in this list. Psylocke is nice because when you Hella, you can help direct your Hella. Um, new cards from from Jeff. Mobius can be Luke, Armor, or Kyra here. Hope, Corvus, Mockingbird, and Hella are all needed. Uh, you can try Call Crossbones, or Eli through Red Hulk. Red Hulk is very good here, but um, he's mostly very good if you don't discard him. If you discard him, he's very often just bringing back 11 power, which is nice, but like when he can get to 23 or more power in hand, it's not as good. All right, our turn by turn and snap is um, turn one, you draw. Turn two, Mindstone is better than any other draw, which is better than Jeff. Turn three, you would like Corvus, um, Hope, and those two are better than a draw card which is better than Mobius. Mobius is there for specific matchups. You see a negative, you see certain things, you know that you want to play Mobius. Turn four if you can, and it only takes one stone, so you should be able to, if you have it, play Mockingbird. If you got a ramp, you would like to play Vision if you can. If not, you play Draw or you drop one of the energy cards. Corvus is totally fine on turn four as well, in particular. And, you know, so is Hope in a stone. Turn five, Big Thing or Vision or Hella. Um... <clears throat> Generally speaking, I will Hella on turn 5 if I know I'm going to want a Shang on turn 6. Turn 6 is Hella, or Big Thing, or Shang-Chi. Cool. Nice and simple play patterns here. Obviously, there's more to it than that, but that's enough to get you started, as always. FAK Crazy, number 1. Thanos, take one last look at this list. It is incredibly powerful. Again, Thanos will hopefully be getting more of a rework later this week, but at least for the next couple days, if you want Infinite, the number one deck in all of Marvel Snap is a really good place to start. Please hit that sub, like, and comment. I mean, look, no channel is going to match our dedication. We do seven days a week of videos. Um, I was getting surgery yesterday. I had already made the slideshow. Our friend Gunny T covered for me. We made sure that you got the video. Um... I may even just redo that video just because, like, I made it. I kind of want to talk about U.S. Agent more. I will have more U.S. Agent decks for you tomorrow. But seven days a week of videos. We just hit 10,000 subs. We're doing our best to keep growing. We want to see if we can get up to those KM best Drewberry numbers of, like, 20,000. But we need your help and support to get there. Um, please help us out. We'd really appreciate it. Also, other ways you can help those of you who are subbed watch longer the longer you watch the video the better it is for us if you're willing to even just let it run let it run like comment if you get one of those surveys that ask you if you like the channel please say yes if you did i mean say yes either way but hopefully you do as well thanks so much i really appreciate it all right caches you and u.s agent and the patch so <clears throat> excuse me the u.s agent was only in caches for some people some people wasted a lot a lot a lot of caches trying to use agent they noticed they didn't respond very quickly at all apparently the people who usually find it quickly did not find it nearly as quickly as usual they went on to do other things assuming that the system was set because they hadn't had a problem with it in so long oops um they also took forever to turn off the ability to use spotlight caches to get us agent which led to more people who didn't check discord changing it this is really upsetting because like 
the easy way to fix this, I mean, the, not there's no easy way to fix this, right? But as soon as you notice, you should turn it off. And at the very least, we know that they can make a pop up at the start of the game because they do so whenever they have a patch. So they should make a pop up that when you load the game says literally like this is a problem, don't do it. So they need to get better at that kind of thing. Um, it's been a really long time since they have like they've got some bugs, right? But since they've had a really big technical issue that affected them monetarily like this. So at the end of the day, I'm not like screaming. Also, I can't scream right now. But at the end of the day, I think this is like a learning experience that hopefully they learn from. Further, the patch is delayed. I wonder if these two things are related. Um, some old bugs are coming back up, too, that have been resolved. So with that said, I think the patch, um, like the patch being messed up, might have messed up some other things. I'm very curious what we don't have a date for the patch, but this was the announced patch date and it is announced as delayed. No, no word still on whether that's one day or one week. I'm telling you as a content creator, we don't know shit either. I promise you as soon as possible, if they release that patch or if they release information on that patch, I promise you I will do like an instant patch video as I always do, at least as best I can. I'm home for two weeks. So outside of some grading, I got some time. Uh, Fassies asks how to counter mill decks, and their real answer is just don't play things that require one card, right? Mill decks are really good if, like, you need some low-impact stuff, some low-cost stuff for your deck to work, but I've been playing mostly Bounce and Surfer, like, my literally my entire Infinite Climb more or less was Bounce and Surfer, um, with a splash of, um, Hella Tribunal, where all the important cards are more expensive, and I had no problems. I, was, I beat, like, 80% of the mill decks I faced, uh, I know people are having trouble with them. I get that people are having trouble with them. I respect that people are having trouble with them. But try like try Surfer um, with a couple twos. Like run at least two twos in a Surfer deck. Um, run some extra stuff in your um, like a bounce deck where basically all of the ones are created equal. And like unless they get lucky and get a hit monkey, you're probably gonna have your important card later. You can also consider trying um, destroy. They generally don't like destroying their uh, thing with the carnage. Or if they pull like a Nico, who cares? You know what I mean? Cool. Raphael Sousa wants to know if Hope Summers is available for purchase in the token shop. I've been getting this question a lot. I know of at least one other content creator, Tio Jarston, has been asking the same question. I haven't gotten an answer yet. Um, it, just so you know, it doesn't appear to be in token shop. If anyone has gotten in token shop, please let me know in the comments. I would absolutely love to know. So, um... Yeah, as far as I know, it's not available, and I promise you I'm doing everything on my end to try and get that answer where possible. Thanks. SpinCut asks about the return of Bundle Data Mines, where they announced what's happening. Um, now nah, they just sort of showed up last uh, patch. We don't know if they're going to continue. We don't know if they're not going to continue. We don't know how accurate they are. We don't know how not accurate they are. They just sort of turned up, I would assume, that upon um, further discussion, they realized that it was just benefiting them to have this advertising. It's like, I know for a fact, I basically stopped buying bundles um, when the data mines were gone, when I couldn't plan. So, like, maybe they did. Maybe maybe it affected their bottom line. Maybe they realized that they were selling the exact same thing either way. So they might as well make people happy. Whatever the case may be, I'm very happy they're back. And since I complained about them earlier, huge props to them for returning them. Um, if you'd like your question read out tomorrow's video, please leave one in the comments to this one. All right, New Hawk. <clears throat> Dark Hawk is back. Our friend Philip Rakovich, I meant to double check the spelling of his name and I bet you I spelled it wrong here. But our friend Philip Rakovich has been playing into in the top thousand. This Dark Hawk list that is doing great. Um Shadow King is stellar in the meta if you've missed it with Angela back being everywhere. Uh Shang-Chi is always kind of great. And then you've got Dark Hawk and Red Hulk to go big. You've got Mystique for that's either second Dark Hawk or to copy a Ms. Marvel. And don't sleep on that copy of Ms. Marvel play. Um, you can even drop an armor at the end of the game with that mystique to like be like, okay, I've got all this extra power in one lane, and now my Darkhawk isn't getting shunned. It's really, really nice. There's a lot to like here. Darkhawk is not much weaker than he was. He just requires a slightly different shell. And like, let's be honest, outside of like Red Hulk, this is a very similar shell to previous Darkhawk, right? All right, so Philip Rakovich, and I definitely spelled that wrong. Sorry, Phil, uh, is our mod and a top 1000 player who has amazing stats with this, 69% win rate. So Jeff can be any good one or two drop. Grandmaster or Cable or Nico or Spiderham are totally fine. Um, Darkhawk and Red Hulk are just kind of needed here, but you can try Omega Red for Ms. Marvel. It's worse, but like, hey, it's a change you can make. 
So 34 and 15, 69% in the top 100. Turn one is Korg over Iceman. Turn two, Jeff over Armor. I would generally pay Korg over any of those. Uh, turn three, Rock Slide is more or less equal to Black Widow, depending on what your opponent has. If you know they're trying to draw a combo, sometimes Widow is better, sometimes Rock Slide is better. Rock Slide is more power on Darkhawk, but whatever. Um, Ms. Marvel is better than Rock Slide, which is more or less equal to Widow on turn four as well. Turn five, you want to play Darkhawk. You can play Mystique if you didn't draw Darkhawk on Ms. Marvel, along with one of your two drops. And sometimes you can just drop Shang here. Turn six is meant to be just Red Hulk, but Mystique on that Dark Hawk makes a lot of sense. And then um, you just sort of drop whatever else you can. Sometimes Shang makes all the sense. Well, Shang and uh, Shadow King make sense here. Cool. This is our new Hawk deck. Please give it a try. Let me know what you think. I think this is really, really good. I've been having a lot of fun with it today. I like playing in Infinite. I get to try stuff again. All right, we have our Drew Barry custom card of the week. Our keyword is play two copies of this in a deck. Our theme was generics. If you'd like to participate in one of these, join Drew Barry's Discord. And um, if you'd like to make your own custom cards, it's snapdracker.me slash custom. Our first winner is the artist again. And the artist has literally won three weeks in a row. Huge props. I owe the artist a season pass. When you see this, the artist, please shoot me a DM. You're crushing these competitions right now. Like, I love your design sense. So one, two, when this is targeted by another effect, block it and add a copy of this to your hand with plus one, two power. I think this is probably balanced with add a copy to your hand with plus one power, but still. Um, it's immune to Killmonger and Death's Domain. Like you play in Death's Domain, it doesn't die. You get a one, four in your hand. You hit it with um, Killmonger, same idea. Okoye, Nakia, anything that gives that kind of pump, it won't get the pump, but you'll get a copy in the hand, which I think is really, really cool. It's got um, Scorpion and Iceman. Like any of those hit him, again, positive. Lamentus can't destroy him. It's just going to, well, it's going to still be at the top card of your deck, and it's going to add a 1-4 version to your hand, but things like ongoing effects won't work. Things like uh, Red Hulk or the plus 5 um, location won't do anything to give him, not Red Hulk, Red Skull or the plus uh, 5 location won't give you a copy. I think this is really cool design. I think this goes in a lot of decks. Um, I know I'd love it in Bounce. So, yeah, props to the Ein Ein Harriar. Also, um, to me, my noble Ein Harriar made me smile when I thought of it. If you know what game that's from, let me know in the comments. You know, for reasons. No specific reasons, just for reasons. <coughs> Neo Charuzo, a first-time winner. I don't think this card is especially powerful, but I think it's so cool that I don't really care. It is a... 5-3 after each turn at a Deviant with the same power to your hand, and he even made a Deviant. This is our Deviant. Um, this is a villain for the Eternals that I think is really cool. Um, basically, ne the next turn, you'll get an 0-3 in your hand. It could be an 0-6, though. It could be an 0-9, right? Whatever power you can get Crow up to. <clears throat> Forge, Okoye, Nikia, etc. can all make Crow bigger, which will make that 0-3 bigger. Um, Hope and Wasp let you get this out on turn four, which gives you two copies of Crow. Psylocke can also do the same thing. So can Electro, but that's not good with this. <laughs> Wave could, though, and that's got some decent use. Cards like Hitmonkey like having an extra 0-3, and Magic lets you get two extra cards out. I like this a lot. I'm a big fan. I hope uh, a card like this gets printed one day. And, like, look at that beautiful. Like, this is a beautiful card. All right. Our next keyword is cost addition or reduction because it's due for 15, aka tax day in America. Uh, our theme here is rich characters because in America, the rich don't pay their taxes. But uh, our theme is rich characters. We want wealthy characters. I'd prefer they be Marvel based, but hey, any old rich character will do. And again, if you'd like to participate, check Drew Barry's Discord and snaptacker.me slash custom. All right. <clears throat> Our final deck is Zun's Bounce. Zun's is the 14-year-old, now he's 15, but he was 14 in December when he was number one on the Infinite Leaderboard, or complicatedly number one with Sizer on the Infinite Leaderboard. He has did not get Hope Summers, he's free to play, so he has been playing largely Bounce decks and Hella decks, because not having Hope, he's playing what makes sense for him, and he thinks this is the second best deck in Marvel Snap right now. So I played this since I got to Infinite, and I've already climbed um, a couple hundred Snap points with it, and I won a... Uh, gold ticket. I haven't actually played the gold ticket itself yet, but I will probably tomorrow. I got time now. 
so this is really cool. This is a classic bounce. Um, this is very similar to where we were with the previous bounce deck. Um, excuse me. Ugh, I don't feel good. I'm really sorry. I'm going to fly through this a little bit. So this is very similar to the previous bounce deck that we were playing um, from Gnome, except this one adds Angela because Angela's buffed and goes back to Iron Man, and Iron Man is great again. And it cut the Hope Summers, and let me just say, after playing this, I don't miss Hope. I don't think this needs Hope at all. Everything is so cheap outside of Iron Man, and Hope doesn't really help with Iron Man. Um, Hope doesn't like fives unless you're running Wasp. So I think that this deck is really, really good and does not need Hope Summers. So you can find Zuns at Twitter.com slash Zuns0122. You need Kitty, Elsa, and Monkey. Nico can be Spider Hammer Iceman. And I absolutely love this deck. I'm having a joy, a blast, a wonderful time playing with it. By the way, if you want to see my infinite deck, uh, Gunny went over it in yesterday's video, so please check it out. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> so, I was intubated yesterday, so my throat is still a little screwy. Turn by turn and snapping. So this is uh, in the top 30. Turn 1, you Bast if you have good targets. That's over Hood, which is more or less equal to Kitty. Um, I play Kitty if Angela's in hand, Hood if not. <coughs> because on turn 2... Sorry about that again. I can play um, a Demon and Kitty. Turn 2, um, is Angela better than 2 ones? Turn 3, Bishop is more or less equal to Elsa. Is more or less equal to Angela in a 1. Turn 4, same concept, although now I've given up on Angela for a little bit. Um, or you can just do your bounce here. Be a little careful with your bounce. This is where I would use Falcon, not, Bish not Bishop necessarily. Um... I, sorry, Beast. I guess you can use Beast here, but then you're playing a bunch of those with Iron Man because you have to be careful of turn six. Turn five is Iron Man or Bounce. Um, if you're going to Bounce, we prefer that to be Beast. Falcon is bad if you have Mysterio because you tend to have more ones in your hand than you can get out with Hit Monkey, and that ends up bad for you. Turn six is Mysterio and Hit Monkey and whatever else you can. Finally, this deck is a thing of beauty. I decided to throw in all my favorite non nan hips. I don't have a non dan hip Mysteria, but this is my favorite non dan hip variant that I own for each of these cards. Cool. Alright, certain chairs of support on our Patreon come with on air thanks. I did spell his name wrong. Oh well. Uh, let's start with Abigail Giesle, Mandatory Burnout, Cables, David G. Wingfield, Direwolf, LAB, Fathor Newman, Good Dog Gamer, Inc., J. Navery. JD with Dalinho, happy belated birthday, go check him out on Twitch. Keratix Lee, Koi Ray, KCH, John O'Golding, Doku, Philip Rakovich, whose deck we featured, and sorry about the spelling, it's been a day. Haplo, Kenny Loggins, and I'm wearing your shirt, Kenny, I don't know if you can see it. Rob Silverman, Juan Diego Labed, The Biza, X Force V, Skippy G, Tommy Nyquist, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Ryan Wood, Models, Louis Antunes, Matt H, Mikey Hijinks, No Flex, Ocularis, Craig Sterry, Pretty Chill, Seamus, Spike Jones, Two Ties, The Pirate King, Tucker, whose stream I'm about to go watch, The Homie Min, and of course, Gunny T, where the Steve, where the Steve, damn, I'm struggling this tonight, where the T stands for. Thanks for covering me yesterday, buddy. All right, thanks so much for watching. My voice will be better tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to cover those US Agent decks. I already got two ready for you. I'm just trying to make sure if they're good before I share them with you. This is a complicated card. Hit that sub, hit that like, hit that comment. If you're just doing more, check out patreon.com slash snapjudgments. See you tomorrow for another snap take. Peace.